Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Cauldrons of War Stalingrad with a special bonus episode brought to you by my Patreon supporter Boomnarau. This time I'll be playing as the Soviets in the Grand Campaign. We'll uh, see how that goes and how far I can beat the Germans, maybe. Um, yeah, sure. It's May 7th, 1942. The year of victory. The enemy has lost the advantages of strategic surprise, and last year we inflicted such enormous losses on them that they will not be able to recover. However, we are we already in a position to really strike back? The rich industrial regions of Ukraine are in the hands of the enemy, and our civilian economy has been sacrificed in all-out war. Our factories, moved to the Urals, are only beginning to fully resume production, and our armed forces still need to rebuild their strength after our winter offensive. Stalin is very confident, but before pushing the invader out of our national borders, it will be necessary to counter the Great Summer Offensive the Wehrmacht is preparing against Moscow. What are our goals? Main objectives are Smolensk, Leningrad, and Kiev. Three points each. Leningrad is still in our hands, but it is besieged. It will be necessary to lift the siege to gain these three points. The reduction of the salience of Ruzhev, Demyansk, and Orel. One point each. The many salients that have formed all along the front are invitations to attack. You will have to reduce or perhaps even eliminate them. Narva, Pskov, Kharkov, Dnipropetrovsk, and Rostov, one point each. Each of these cities is a strong strategic and symbolic objective. Rostov is already in our hands. Bleed the Wehrmacht dry, one to three points. The enemy can no longer replenish their losses. By destroying some of their armies, we would end this war as early as next year. Um, developers notes the Soviet players victory conditions your goals may seem very unrealistic to you and have very and have little connection to the subject of the game indeed but what about Stalingrad your goals are based on what the Stavka could hope for at the start of the game Joseph Stalin had estimated that several times between January and June that the Soviet territory would be entirely liberated by the end of the year okay that's optimistic this optimism was motivated by bad assumptions. The estimate of the losses suffered by the Wehrmacht had been seriously overstated. One million instead of the probable 250,000. And the retreat of the Germans during the winter offensive gave the, gave the impression that the Soviet troops were already able to compete on equal terms with the Germans. At the time, there was obviously no question of fighting around Stalingrad nor towards Baku. New objectives may therefore appear during the game to take into account the evolution of the military situation. The threat to Moscow. Moscow is still under threat of a fascist offensive. Moscow is not only a strong symbolic objective, it is also the hub of the Soviet rail network. If Moscow is taken, the North could not hold out for long. The ferocity with which the enemy defended the Russia salient can only have one cause. He intends to use it as a springboard to Moscow as soon as the good weather returns. The enemy's intentions are clear and are confirmed both by interviewed prisoners and by the numerous reconnaissance missions carried out in the Moscow area. A Kremlin focus score represents the Stavka's belief in main offensive towards Moscow's deployed on the right of the map. As long as this score is positive, the player cannot move units to the south, south, southwest, Crimean front, and their operations. The focus on Moscow score is handicapping for the Soviet player because it prevents them from sending reinforcements towards the south to counter the main German offensive. This handicap is however very relative since time and space is still in favor of the Soviet player. This mechanism however can be particularly troublesome against a human opponent who has mastered the game. The focus on Moscow score naturally decreases over time and as the German progresses, but some of your choices and the choice of the German player during events can also influence this score. Even without this mechanism, strengthening the South can only be done with, to the detriment of the Soviet offensives against Ruzhev and towards Leningrad, which require many armies. Since the set of victory points located within the North and the center are sufficient to win the game, the question of the number of units to bring down towards the South, and especially the question of the right moment to do so, are the most important questions of the game for the Soviets. Red Tank Armies. The enemy has powerful panzer divisions and the mechanized corps were p we pitted against them last year ha were annihilated. 
the leadership of the armed forces of the Council of People's Defense Commissioners took advantage of the spring to completely overhaul the organization of our armed forces. We now have armored and mechanized corps and even real armies of tanks. Composed of around 35,000 men, 300 to 500 tanks, and 1,500 to 200 pieces of artillery, these armies of tanks should be able to compete with the fascist armored formations. These units, however, suffer from a lack of trucks and tractors, and the infantry accompanying, accompanying them has to advance on foot or riding on the tanks. We must also admit that the crews have been trained very quickly and that we still lack radios. The resourcefulness and ardor of our soldiers should overcome these problems. It is thus quite possible to direct operations with simple orders, by waving flags or by having recourse to couriers or motorcycles. What even terms now? Maskirovka. The enemy relies heavily upon aerial reconnaissance, but we have become masters in the art of hiding entire armies in the deep forests of Russia. Many reserve armies are being assembled in the Moscow region, and Stalin alone knows their number and exact positions. We will do everything to ensure that the enemy continues to ignore their existence. This art of camouflage, combined with disinformation operations, will allow us to surprise the enemy, especially since we are remarkably well informed about the composition of fascist forces. The armies in reserve in the fronts are not visible to the German player. In wooded terrain or in the HQ of the fronts, the Soviet player can camouflage their units in reserve, making them immune to aerial bombardment and reconnaissance. The best offense is the offense. At the general staff, Shapashnikov and Vasilevsky want to wait for the enemy on the strong defensive positions which block the road to Moscow and let them run out of steam. Nevertheless, the idea of one or more preventative attacks to hamper the enemy forces' concentrations is becoming popular. The Stavka speaks of active strategic defense to define these attacks of low or medium importance. Stalin thus imagines up to seven small offenses, but he's also sensitive to the arguments of Timoshenko, who wants to launch a major strategic offensive towards Kharkov, which could then push towards the Dnieper. Let's see. Let the enemy comes to us. It reduces tiredness slash attrition scores of units by two. Let's launch a major offensive towards Kharkov. A castle operation is launched around Kharkov. The southwestern front command points increase to five while this operation is in progress or multiple small offensive. The western, Bryansk, Kalinin and Volkov fronts each, each gain two command points in the next turn. Uh, huh. Operations are launched on these fronts. I actually think, like with this, they're just gonna kill my my armies. I'll just use this, and I don't, I don't need to act on it. So we'll uh, we'll just see. All right. Um, the axis goes first, I think. They don't. Hmm. Well, anyway, we have Crimea first we just won um operation isole <laughs> um anyway this is a new text for all of them so i'll read it siege of sevastopol the port of sevastopol is strategically located on the shores of the black sea the site is naturally protected by cliffs and hills which surround it in addition to these natural defenses here are the most formidable coastal defenses of the whole coast. The Wehrmacht will have to take, do a lot to take the city. Um, and Kerch Offensive. The Soviet bridgehead in Crimea was unable to break through beyond the Kerch Peninsula. Exhausted, lacking in supplies and crammed into a very narrow front, the, Soviet's troops, the Soviet troops now have to face a powerful German offensive to oust them. The best thing to do here, it, what is controlled by the party by the way? Supplement the strength of this army, giving it a boost in Bolshevik forever. The army gains in number of troops and in cohesion, but its military experience decreases. Oh, okay. Um, as it is, I'd rather just entrench these. And uh, that 
just to delay the enemy in Sevastopol, and then these two have already been dug in. Obviously, the enemy can just shell pretty hard there. In the south, I have only one as well. None of these are doing particularly great. Um, actually, yeah, so let's refit 56th. Got a few more units there. But, okay, that's the south. So we have southwest with a Kharkov offensive and Operation Frederikus that apparently is still there. Hmm. Well, against Frederikus, at the very least, I want to dig in the 57th, because it's the most powerful. Uh, and the 9th is very weak, as we can see here. They have barely anything. Let's put them in reserve. The Briansk front. Oh yeah, let's read this. Beyond the Mies River, a difficult step extends to Rostov, gateway to the Caucasus. Then here, a sickle, a big sickle cut in the Isium salient could lock the Soviet troops in a large pocket and provide the Wehrmacht with a better base for its summer operations. The liberation of Kharkov by the Red Army would not only be a symbolic victory, this attack would also greatly disrupt the Wehrmacht, which is preparing its summer offensive. Um, Fallblau phase one. Foreign edge is an important rail junction which controls the north-south rail traffic. The capture of the city would greatly complicate the logistics of the Red Army. However, the road to Foreign edge is crossed by many rivers. There is much opportunity for the Soviets to slow down or even stop the German offensive. All right, well, we have these two in here. I'd rather just have them indeed stay dug in. Not really interested in doing barrier troops at that point. Defense in debt um, is probably quite good here for both of these armies. And we know that the enemy cannot attack here, so, well, they can counterattack technically, but it seems like many of our units are not up to snuff. Um, we do have four out of four. How many planes do we have in the Brienne's front anyway? Six, and then here eight. I actually would like to try and get air superiority here. Because um, I think ultimately that will be uh, very handy for us in this section. Because we'll be fighting on this one for the longest. Um, in the reserve I can refit my units and that's also exactly what I'm going to do here. The Western Front has only this. They also have a few tank corps in the back, but most likely we'll have to reorganize a lot anyway. Mm. They do have defense and death, and let's also refit you, those units in the reserve. I'm, I'm just, you know, not ready for an attack, obviously. Uh, Northwest has only this. 
And then there's the Volkov front. Weird that they would be isolated, but that means I'll take them out. I thought I uh, had only one for Crimea. Did I have two? I did use all of my command points. That's weird. So it keeps saying there's one. Ah, I have one for Sevastopol and then one for these. Huh. Uh, I don't know what this is. Effect to coastal army. Not sure. Mm, they cannot do defense in death. Um, let's just see what that does. The units which attach an army. Okay, I guess these guys get a little bit bigger then. Let's see what happened. Uh, first of all, Crimea, they started shelling the coastal army. Um, but these guys cannot do a lot. I cannot get them out or anything else and control by the party. How many men do I have in Crimea? I have nothing, so I, that doesn't help me. Uh, I can entrench the sailors. And then they decided at least to put that aggression there. Uh, these guys also cannot do defense in death. Uh, which is also weird. Well, I guess I'll also just dig them in. Uh, I guess that's the Crimea. In the south. Oh, that counts as the south or something. That's super weird. And I forgot Caucasus, or is that new? Hmm. I'll see what to do with that last point. Um, Anyway, nothing happened here. Then in Frederikus, they actually did start right away. And they got 57th in the cauldron. And uh, that puts them at 4%. Now, I will very likely just try to get these guys out. Um, actually, let's just also see what happens here. I have only one point. Hmm. They attack with the first corps into the eighth army. That didn't do anything. You now have two. And you're refitted, so you can go to the front and entrench. Northwest, they attacked. The 11th lost a bit. Mm, but let's just refit these guys too now. Kalinen. So if you go to the front, in the west, they didn't do anything. So I was busy with this. Uh, how many? I have one man in the west. So that. That won't uh, help. Um, I 
and then at the Brian's front. Like that was sucky, but I can't really do a whole lot there. And well, let, let's see here first anyway. I got both of these on defense and death, but I'd like them to get a bit more armor or uh, ammo. So I have both of them refit, and then both of them are technically as powerful as they can be. And then from the southwest. I guess I'll be I'll just be pulling out my most powerful armies, which is the sixth army. And I'm not gonna send it to Operation Frederikus or to the push towards Orel. Interestingly enough, I cannot send it in a road to to road to Rostov. Um So I'll send you to Fallblau. And the 21st Army as well. These will likely die. Maybe I'll get these out. But this at least will take some time. Now I have those guys in the Brian's front. Let's just dig them in for now. It's the best I can do. And then the Caucasus, let's send both of these to the southern front. Oh, I just one, of course. May 21st. They again shelled this army and then refit it. They're not dead yet. Again, I have no additional units in the Crimea. And then here they attacked and killed the 47th army hmm. I mean there's practically no way I'm stopping the Germans here through any means but I cannot get these guys out either so like uh, there's very little I can do Ah oh, shit, that's just ah that's the southern front. Now I get it. <laughs> I mean, they're not going to be able to do anything either which way just this shelling might tire the 54th core out a little bit but that's about it nothing happened here they're just resting Frederikus 9th army got killed by the panzers and then they started moving 57th is technically not yet dead but uh, you can bet that I'm just going to get two armies out here. Mm. And that's going to be army group Bobkin. And Sadly for the 28th Army, they are not uh, not up to snuff, so I'll get the 38th Army out. And we only have the 28th Army here. That's fine. Um, yeah, can we... Yeah, we can see how many they have. Fair enough. Um, now we have Briansk and Orel. They killed the 50th army with 2nd Panzer. How many uh, planes do I have here now? Three. They're only pinned. Uh, 
Let's get that 50th army out. At least it didn't die. So that's good. In the west, they send out the 46th Panzer Corps. Um, how many reserves do I have? 11 artillery, 1 infantry here. How many trucks? Enough. Um, that means I also want air superiority here. And I'll bomb them. Clean in front cannot do that. They attack the 11th army with Azul. But nothing too serious. I'll just refit them and they're now up to reasonable strength. Um, at Leningrad, I... It doesn't... Oh, even that doesn't help me, huh? I didn't know. Okay. Sucks. Well... The fact that the enemy can smash me is uh, pretty sad at that. Um, they didn't do much damage. And then the Caucasus. I'll do that. Send them to the south. And... That's it. All right. Once again, Crimea. Enemy shelled the coastal army. It's only the coastal army now. I guess I, mean, I can restore communications. That's about it. At least we're holding them off for a little bit here. And then 22nd Panzer Division attacked 51st Army. Which didn't do a whole lot, luckily, for this turn. That's in the south. Nothing happened here, so I can just kind of relax. Frederikus is apparently done. Not sure what happened there. That's weird. Deep Raid, First Panzer Army. Hmm. It just arrived there, but it's not even a Kessel now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 28th to lay them. I'm just going to dig them in and they're going to have to use their points in order to get those guys out. And that will take them a long time. Let's just go to Leningrad. Surprised they don't actually do anything there. I guess they're attacking the other areas. Fourth army again. We're going to have plenty of men there. So it's not that bad, actually. And it does exhaust the dare forces. Um, So even though obviously I, I can't really attack at this point, um, Kalinin has no men. So I, do, doing anything with those guys doesn't really help me. They're all refitted. I guess these guys have the most stuff. Shelling, of course, not very likely to lead to a whole lot there. How many things? We have one infantry in the west. 
Let's just put them in the reserve for now. Eleven artillery and enough trucks. So these guys actually can be refitted. Then Bryansk. They did air bombardment, despite me having air superiority, and then conveniently they didn't lose any planes. Well, that's something. I have two tanks, three planes, so I can't really re outfit them. Um, let's get these guys to the reserve and leave it at that. Now we have the southwestern front. If only this one one thing. Uh, let's give them barrier troops. June fourth. Crimea, once again they shelled them and then they shelled the Navy, which is still here. Can do a night attack. In Stalingrad, the Soviets became experts in night assaults. This action will not achieve spectacular results, but will keep your opponents under pressure by increasing their fatigue without major risk to the attacking unit. Progress is limited to 1% with this action, and you can only use it in urban areas. I mean, I will. I'll do anything for that. They did an air bombardment and then an air lift. Air bombardment is not particularly interesting, although they don't have any ammo. I mean, retreating only gives them more pro progress, although they will progress in one go either way. They did not do anything here. How much does the South have anyway? No reserves? Except planes. Fourth Panzer attacked the thirty eighth Army, giving it a run for its money. have to go to the strategic reserve just like army group Bobkin. Fourth Panzer lost one infantry but that's not really important for them. They're isolated stretch lines and exposed flanks though. Now claim this unit. The Stavka keeps certain units in reserve for plans of which you do not have the details. Convincing the staff guy to put these reinforcements at your disposal is no easy task and will cost you a command point. Refuses to assign. Refuses to assign. In rare cases, uh, both. <laughs> is it 100%? It's rare cases. <laughs> it's just, nope. Okay. Um, you know, these guys can technically do barrier troops. Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Oh well. Hmm. That was weird. Uh. 46 pan score attacking into the 33rd army, me losing one for that. On the 33rd, not too interesting though. Let's have you go into the strategic reserve. 
and you into the reserve. Uh, much of what I'm doing here is just kind of reorganizing, especially at the start. They did not do anything at this point. Um, I'm not going to assault uh, or anything here. The best thing I can do at the moment is just shelling. Tends not to be super effective. They did a little number on the 11th, but let's see if I can just shell them back. Obviously, they have quite a bit too. The enemy guys are not easy to beat through any means. Did they start attacking at Leningrad? No, they didn't. The best unit I have is this one, for shelling at least. So we'll have to see how that goes. June 11th. They shelled Sebastopol's navy, which is still not dead. Haha, <laughs> excellent. It's taking them very, very long now to grab this, which is really good. Seems like this is gone now. They must have killed it or something. 21st is dead. Yeah, and then they rolled over it. Um, okay, so they got all these troops now. Fall Blau Phase 1. It was ultimately behind the Oskol River that the Red Army decided to halt the German offensive. This natural obstacle, however, is not a sufficient one. The bravery of the Soviet soldiers will have to save the day. Cohesion of Soviet troops plus 1. Okay, that's nice, but... Um, well, you can do a night attack or shell them. I've got the one arrow. Yeah. Axis losses, one artillery. See? Haha. <laughs> that's actually useful. Nice. They lost an artillery. That, I mean, it's better than nothing. I mean, come on. Then here. They kind of smashed them, so they're dead. And then they did deep raid. They got the 37. Let's restore communications and let's just dig them in. We'll see what happens, whether they need to kill them or not. I mean, they are at 37 now. But again, I just like to delay them there as, as much as possible. They haven't done anything here yet. Uh, so I could just leave that and really focus on uh, on the Crimea there. Now the southwestern front, though, is going to be in a bit of trouble. So they got these into the castle. Once again, I, I kind of need to get my best units out. Um, the interesting thing is, is if I move a unit... Well, let's just put you in reserve. Strategic reserve. And see you in reserve. Uh, but that's all Briansk. So Southwest has nothing currently. I'll just ask them to claim this unit. Claim this unit. By dint of assistance and thanks to his lucid analysis of the situation, the front commander was able to, to obtain these precious reinforcements. 13th Tank Corps. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Claim it. And refit it. Refit it. So b basically over time, I guess we'll just get more and more troops in most of the fronts. We'll get reinforcements there and, and things like that. We'll, uh, I'm not sure whether it goes in phases or, or anything of that, uh, that sort. Now 
But the enemy can pr hit pretty hard, so. Nothing. All right, that's good. They do have the ninth army here, which makes it uh, pretty tricky. West is only this. Again, in the west, I have no manpower. But six, huh? But the weather is bad, so I don't really feel like doing anything of, of such sort. At Kalinin, though. Do I have artillery? No. So the only thing I can keep doing is just shelling. Hoping that eventually it will have an effect. The Azul infantry, I thought, only had one infantry, but I guess they have more. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. Eleventh just lost a cohesion. Four, two, 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 two. Let's refit them though. Make sure that cohesion is back before we do anything else. The fact that they lost one infantry is enough there. No, that sounds a bit silly, but. All right, well, again, that's just something. June 18th, but uh, I'll be wrapping this one up. Uh, the Soviet uh, side is always, uh, yeah, let's just say, a little bit less interesting than the German side, but, uh, you know, we'll see how these things go. Um, at any rate, well, okay, so they'll, they'll get this next turn. Um, and then again, they, they just did a deep raid there. 59, All right? Well, um, I'm going to wrap things up. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please do consider leaving a like, comment, or subscribe. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Pumnara, Dodge Pastor, C Day, the Swords, Mandingo, and Tom Slavich Lynn, and all the rest of the Patreon supporters, of course. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye bye.